city is really shining this holiday season. And in fact, Seattle is loaded with holiday history. Some still here, some gone. But Felix Bunnell, historian Felix Bunnell, is, is with us to share some of the more nostalgic holiday memories in Seattle, which you know a lot about. It's some very sentimental downtown spots. I love downtown Seattle. Any time of year, Christmas time, when there's colored lights everywhere, it's very special. Mm -hmm. And then these little spots, like my favorite is probably the old Frederick and Nelson building. It's now Nordstrom, ah. but back in the 40s and 50s, they would put on these elaborate displays with live seals. They'd have live puppet shows, like a college professor and a bunch of co-eds doing live puppet shows in the windows. How they, people after Thanksgiving would go down, after Thanksgiving dinner, see the windows debut. It was a really big deal. It's those same windows where Santa Claus photos were invented in the 1940s. A PI photographer, in the, when the PI building was across the street, looked over, saw kids lined up for Santa Claus and thought, you know, I could take pictures and make money. And so in 1944, he took a couple weeks off from work, made like three times his annual salary and said, you know, I'm not going to be a photographer for the PI anymore. I'm going to do Santa photos once a year and live like a king. This so. was the person who invented right in, them in here in Seattle. Seattle. Yeah, yeah, they, yeah, yeah. I love when you told me these yeah, stories. Yep. All right, um, so what about 4th Avenue and Pine Street, the old Bon Marche? Another great department store. You know, department stores are the retail experience of the 20th century, mm -hmm. right, and all the decorations. And that big star, you know, goes back to the 1950s. It was originally was a big tree, a big, like, big lighted tree hanging from the side of the building. Eventually it morphed in 1957 is when the star that we know today, the look of it anyway, debuted. I love that it, star. It went through some troubles in the last couple of years, but it's back and it's here to stay and it's just this quintessential landmark for Seattle downtown holiday history. It really feels so beautiful when you're walking around and you see that star. It's hopeful. It really does inspire yep. hope and happiness. Yep. And it's, it's really key. Let's go to Fifth Avenue and University Street, the Fairmont Olympic, which is just yeah. jaw-dropping this time of year. You know, I love old movies. A lot of big-time movies, like Christmas time movies, are always in some big grand mm -hmm. hotel. And in yeah. any grand hotel, that's the Olympic Hotel in downtown Seattle, the Fairmont Olympic. It opened just in time for Christmas of 1924, so it's almost its centennial next year. Mm -hmm. Just go in the lobby and kind of imagine that you're from out of town. You're trying to get, you know, trying to get to where you're going, or you can just, you know, you know, you'll be going home to your own place later. Watch the travelers going through with colored lights, the cocktails. It's just a great spot. It really is a beautiful spot. I actually went there with our executive producer for cocktails last year nice. and it was just so nice to sit there and be in that space. And you know what we did? We did what you said. When you go to the Fairmont, you go to the mezzanine level and you look at all the history and yep. all the pictures and it really just takes you back. A gorgeous space, yeah. All right, let's go to Fifth Avenue Theater, which is one of my favorite places. The most ornate theater in downtown Seattle. It dates back to the 1920s. I think they've got White Christmas there this year, but I remember one year back in the late 80s, they were showing movies there and I went with a bunch of friends and we saw It's a Wonderful Life in that movie theater. It's the best experience I've ever had watching a Christmas movie in that gorgeous, gorgeous landmark of a theater. Have you been to White Christmas yet? I haven't been to it. You no, go yeah. check that out, you're gonna love it. <laughs> All right, let's head down, down to Pike Place Market now, which is always beautiful this time My of year. My favorite spot, you have to go on Christmas Eve or some day, just a few days before Christmas, go early in the morning when it's still dark so you can see the colored lights mm -hmm. all up. Go have breakfast at the Athenian, get fortified. Then go to the De Laurentiis Italian market. It'll be packed. There'll be millions of people trying to get there. You got to go and get like one of those panettone loaves. Or I like to get um, Jordan almonds, you know, those sort of hard. I, I know a Jordan almond. I have my any broken teeth to, now. Yeah, with any almond. excuse to go to De Laurentiis on the Christmas Eve morning is just. There's nothing that, that says Christmas for them. To get anise for your anise cookies. Exactly. I'm yeah. going to have to share yep, yep. some of those with okay, you. Okay. All right, you're going to love them. <laughs> I, I'm not kidding. Um, King Street Station. Is it's, it decorated? Is it just beautiful? There might be little decorations on the counter and other things, but it's it's a place where people have come and gone through Seattle since 1906. Wow. And I like to imagine World War II when people were heading out or heading home, all the reunions, the farewells that happened there. It's a very emotional spot. And there's something about trains and Christmas that are directly tied in my mind. I think about Christmas time, whether it's model trains mm -hmm. going around the tree or just this notion of traveling on a train to get home for Christmas. Mm -hmm. Go and watch people traveling somewhere. You know, the, the romance has been stomped out of airports, right? Nobody, nobody says like, oh, the airport. Oh, I can't oh, wait to it's, sit in It's so nostalgic. New. But train stations are still nostalgic and still, even though if you're traveling somewhere just for business or whatever, yeah. it's just, it says something magical about travel still. And that's, I cling to that. <laughs> I cling to that too. It is so beautiful. I hadn't been to King Street Station. I dropped many people off, but I hadn't been inside until I recently, a couple, about a year ago, was going to Portland. Yeah. And I walked inside and I was just... My breath was taken away at the beauty about the care and the workmanship that went into building that. Talk, can you tell me a little bit about the history of train stations? Because the, the Sacramento train station, the Portland train station, all these train stations along that line are gorgeous. Yeah, I mean, that one dates to 1906. It's the mm -hmm. golden age of rail travel in the United States. It was a very complicated mess of train tracks coming through the city. They kind of struck this agreement to build a station on the edge of downtown, kind of get things all squared away and, and take away this mess that was along the waterfront. 
and that's been the main station. It's served continuously. Other stations have come and gone. That one has been in continuous operation for 117 years. And so did they know that while building it? Because a lot of times you think about when, when we build structures in the past, you think about the pioneer towns. I mean, this is built with such a grand flair and, and, and it's so thoughtful and the marble and everything. Why did they put that much effort into these train stations? I think it was all ego. No, just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's, it's, a great, it's, it's modeled on the Campanile in Venice, that tower. Mm. Look at the pictures in Venice. The train station matches it. It's just gorgeous. So beautiful. Yeah. Um, I have my final and almost favorite holiday decoration would be the King 5 broadcast tower that we, the only TV station, I might add, actually decorates for the holidays and turns into a giant Christmas what tree. What a coincidence. Is this show on King? Oh, my goodness. I didn't know that. Oh. No, so the drive home, go up Queen Anne Hill, go, yeah. either go to Kerry Park or go to one of the, the viewpoints on any part of Queen Anne Hill. First, you get eye level with the Space Needle and see the Space Needle decoration. That's kind of a special thing. Yeah. And then head a few more blocks up there to Gaylor Street and pull up right under the King 5 tower and look up at it. You get this weird kind of crick in your neck, but you get this whole appreciation for this thing. You see the lights kind of twinkling and stuff. Then when you see it, when it works, whether you head north or south, mm -hmm. and you see it, you have this difference like, hey, I was there. It's kind of weird, but it's sort of, it's a special thing. It's been, it's been a fact of holiday life in Seattle for decades. For decades, and it really does bring me a sense of pride that, that we still do that every year. Yeah. I feel like so many traditions are, are falling away, but we still do it every year, because apparently we're the only TV station that, that loves the holidays. Is this show on King TV? Well, did I mention this is on King TV? <laughs> no, but seriously and truly, I, I have to say it's, it is really neat to see that. Yeah. And it is beautiful to see everything around, around this time of year. So I'm so yeah. grateful that you brought it into context. I'm so grateful that you shared all of this with us. Thank you so much. My Happy pleasure. holidays, Happy Felix. holidays, you too. You are a gift you to are New too. Day Northwest <laughs> and King 5. Just want to put that out there. Is this show on King 5? It's on King 5. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. So is the, the, the big transfer. Is that a big tower? Yeah, yeah that's yeah. King 5. Um, all right. <laughs>